Good afternoon everybody, I'm Mike with Omega Survival and today I'm not going to do a review. I need a little break, a change from the reviews, I've been doing a lot of them. Today I'm just going to do a video where I show you what I do around my camp. Um, more importantly, my gear. I'm going to show you my gear and what I take with me and why I choose to take it with me. Um, through a lot of experience in the woods and spending a lot of time outdoors, I know what works for me and what doesn't. So I'm going to show everybody my kits and I have layers and layers of kits. I have a lot of abundances of stuff and I have reasons for that. It's only certain things. I have my field kits and a backup kit and my main tools that I work with and it starts with my clothes. Um, before I go out, I check the weather, I see what it's going to be like for the day, and I usually dress a little warmer than what I think it's going to be outside. And uh, ever since I was a kid, I've been hearing from my dad, you can always take layers off, but you can't put them on because they don't grow tree, they don't grow jackets and trees out in the field, they don't grow clothes out in the field. So, today I have a Mountain Hardware Windstopper fleece on, and I have Under Armour cold gear, and I have really heavy duty pants on from Cry Precision, the G3 combat pants, and Solomon boots, smart wool socks, it was supposed to be a little chilly today. So, the very first thing I do when I get into my camp is I start a fire, so I spend 20 minutes to a half hour, whatever it takes to get as much firewood as I think is going to need. I'm going to need to burn the whole time I'm at camp. However much firewood you think you're going to need to burn, if you're anything like me, you're going to need four times that much. So whatever pile you think you've accumulated, double it and times it by two and that's probably how much you'll use. So the very first thing I do is I start a fire so I'm gonna go gather some firewood and I'm gonna show you how I do that whole process. The first thing I usually do is I collect wood hung up on trees like this. The most smartest advice I can give you is try to find stuff that's still standing and dead because that's the most dry stuff you're gonna find. Stuff just snaps. I always have a bag of fat wood. And the thing about these pants that I love so much is that they got built their knee pads that remove, they're removable, take them out. So if the ground's wet, you can just kneel on anything and you're good. This is a beautiful piece of fat wood. It's 100% solid almost all the way through. It's all resin. So, I got some wood graded up really quick.
This is just how I choose to do it. It starts a fire fast. And a nice little raised bed. I just shaved a bunch of shavings of fat wood. Ugh, this stuff is thick. It makes my knife look dull. It's not. My knife's like a razor. This stuff is just really good quality. Get my lightning strike out. Sometimes I just get it going this way. Other times I need to shave finer stuff. It all depends on what kind of time I have. And I just got a pile of really dry sticks. Really dry. That I put over the top. Alright, I'm going to go through my kit a little bit now. First thing is I have a great bushcraft knife with me. Today I have a Bark River Bushcrafter in 3V steel that I keep razor sharp and I keep a ferro rod on there. Here's my baton I always have in camp. It's heavy wood. I go through them a lot. Here's a bag from the Hidden Woodsman that I keep globs of fat wood in. I also use it to kneel on. Entertainment. It's a pocket radio, and it's a good one. Steel container. Um, depending on how long I'm gonna be out, depends on how long how many of these I take? Sometimes I'll just take a camel bag full of water. Usually one of these, I'm okay for about four hours, and I usually fill that up with green tea. Usually don't bring water with me. Grants for his Brooks Small Forest Axe, the Ray Mears edition. It's exactly the same, it just has Ray Mears bushcraft burned into the handle. You can see the grains run perfect. AS and the initials. I use that X so much. All right, to start. This is the medical kit I was talking about in my last video that I keep with me. <coughs> Just a couple of small med medications, a bunch of gauze pads, medical tape, and neosporin, and a Ziploc, a waterproof lock bag. 10 aqua tablets. My phone charger that goes with something else in my kit that I'll get to in a few minutes. My daily medication that I'm supposed to take, I usually take two extra doses with me in case anything happens. 
I have an Olight headlight with fresh batteries, 200 lumen. And I keep stuff I want right away in here. My light, my medication. I'm a smoker, unfortunately. I keep my cigarettes in there. This is my old crap kit. That if I gotta grab something and run, if there's an emergency, then I can only take one thing with me. I'll take this and I'll show you that in a few minutes. I got a 750 lumen coast flashlight, waterproof, impact resistant. It's like the poly grips from Shorefire. But a uh, tenth of the price. Okay. And here I have another light, a zebra light. It's 200 lumens, and I keep two batteries for it. I make sure it is fresh batteries in it. I have two sets of batteries for my headlight. Gum, sugar. Who wouldn't want a sugar boost? Keep another ferro rod and fire starter in there. And that's all I have in there right now. My patches. Keep two Bridgeford sandwiches and peanut butter from an MRE. I usually eat before I go and I take food with me to eat. That's for emergencies. Real mil spec 550 paracord OD green and a climbing grade carabiner. The stuff I have in this pouch is usually that kind of stuff that you just set and forget in case you need it. And to start with the bag, I found the most rugged, durable, wear resistant bag I could find. And that's a mil spec EVC pack. Um, this pack was like a Carhartt jacket when I got it. It was like iron. It was so stiff and rugged. It was really hard to wear. Also, a high ground gear breacher tool holder. And that holds my axe real nice on the side of the pack with this. Because that goes into there. This clips here. And it's all nice and snug. rock solid doesn't move I have a few more of them I can put them across the front but this is how I usually keep my bag for real I'm not setting anything up for cameras right now this is how I always have it a schmog because I use that to sit on actually here's a uh, Solar powered, crank powered, also takes batteries, hand radio, and flashlight, and dog whistle, and there's a solar power. It also charges my iPhone. That's why I take this with me. It's really rugged. Sure, I'll wipes. I keep a large knife with me all the time. Just because it's my personal preference. Here's the important part. The heart of my bag. This is my field kit. I keep extra paracord in there. Little chunks of really good grade fat wood. It's a diamond hone sharpening stone. Diamond hone on one side, the stone on the other, and it's cracked, but it still works great. And a leather strap for taking the uh, gunk off of my blade. Gorilla tape, bank line, fire starter, my lightning strike. A hand saw. I usually don't have this saw. I usually have a Wicked Tree Gear saw that I think works 10 times better. But I'm in the process of getting a new blade. I had it for four years and I was cutting a fatwood root out the other day from a longleaf pine. And there was rocks embedded in the root and it just completely folded the edges of the blade down. So I'm in the process of getting a new blade. I don't even know why that paracord's there. Pocket chainsaw. 
multi-tool. My little trekker. Swiss Army knife, and that's it. That's all I keep in here. If you think you don't need an oh crap kit out in the woods, you're mistaken. Um, for instance, like four years ago, I was probably like seven or eight miles up into the woods and I had a run in with a bunch of coyotes and they did not want me up there. I had to drop all my gear and run and uh, I didn't have anything to protect myself that day. But that's when I started carrying after that. That was scary stuff. We have stormproof matches, micro cord, two small heavy gauge carabiners. In the front here, I usually have a larger pocket knife and a flashlight, but not today. I always carry a pocket knife on my side. I just put it in my pocket and forget I have it there. So, in this kit, I have a tin full of really good grade fat wood, dried out. That stuff goes up like gasoline. My little survival kit. These are stormproof matches coated in wax. They're like three stormproof matches together coated in wax. Little tiny knife from Gerber Razor Sharp, like a scalpel. I have needles in there. Two of them, really big needles. Tinder Quicks. A little micro fishing kit and safety pins. And another repair needle. A ferro rod. A hacksaw blade, brand new. I could use that to cut. And for scraping my rod. Or scrape shavings. Snare wire. Really high test sewing thread. A ripstop waterproof patch. A scalpel blade. And a Fresno lens. And I'd say that that stuff there on top of, I always have my knife on me. This is never, ever not on me. As soon as I get into the wood line, this is on me. So that's my first layer of protection. And that's it. That's pretty much what I carry. This is my old crap kit in case I gotta run for any reason. It's just to give me a few options. I usually have more in the kit, but not today. I actually gotta change that when I get home because I usually pack this kit and don't touch it. And that's what you should do with a kit like this. You just pack it the way you need it and forget you have it. And these two are always together. So that's it as far as my gear goes. Micro cords, good stuff. Um, I think it's 80 pound test. But I really gotta get my flashlight and heavy pocket knife back in here. I usually keep a Spider Co. Manix 2 and a Through Night T10 in there with the diffuser. If I could help it, not really a trick. You don't even need to cut and saw wood. Most of the time you could snap it over your knee save your tools and you know come to think of it just so I'm more accurate uh, a couple of years ago I, I don't think it was coyotes I think it was a pack of wild dogs I'm not sure I wasn't sticking around to find out but they were after me I'm actually almost positive I'd be more comfortable saying that they were wild dogs but 
nevertheless, I got chased. And it wasn't fun. So try to be prepared when you go out to the woods. But have fun, you know, pack a bag. It has you comfortable enough that you don't have to worry about anything. You can do everything you need to do while you're in the woods. And have fun with it. That's what it's all about. That's why I'm not doing a review today. I needed to just come out in the woods and have fun. Sometimes I don't like to sit here and shop. I enjoy batoning wood. And you can baton larger wood. With smaller knives, you just have to know how to do it. You gotta start on the outside edges and work your way in. This knife is killer. Fiddle back forge camp knife in 3V steel. It's got a serious edge on it. Almost a quarter inch thick, but it tapers down in such a way that the edge is very effective for carving. As you can see. You'd be amazed what leather could do to a knife. You just gotta get the angle on there. And that's it. Clean that debris off the edge and it's good and sharp again. Everything is wet. This is the river. Well, everybody, I'm Mike with Omega Survival, and I hope you all enjoyed my video. It was just a day of me spending the day out in the woods, and that's it. Uh, I just wanted to take a break from reviews today and hang out. So, until next time, thanks for watching.